Hello guys, so we are now at I'm Power Fund Forum in Monaco, one of the largest uh, wealth management and asset management conferences. And here I with you, Anna Tutova, co-founder of Coins Telegram, and as well our guest, uh, Cathy Wood. She is probably one of uh, the most uh, popular innovators and uh, uh, investment managers, and she is the founder of ARK Invest. And she is a big Bitcoin bull and as well a Tesla bull. So great to have you here, Kesser. Thank you, Anna. Really delighted to be here. So can you tell uh, uh, for people who are not aware about you yet, about your background and how did the idea of starting ARK Invest come to you? Yes, uh, so I started ARK Invest for two reasons. To focus exclusively on disruptive innovation. Uh, because I saw the traditional asset management world, especially after the tech and telecom bust and the 08, 09 meltdown, move towards passive and benchmark sensitive and away from innovation. And I said, no, we have to, we have to focus on innovation because there are five major platforms evolving now. Uh, so multi-omic sequencing, uh, robotics, uh, energy storage, artificial intelligence, and blockchain technology, all evolving at the same time. And they're going to cause explosive growth, what we're calling super exponential growth, that we don't think people understand. But what they're also going to do is they're going to cause a lot of disruption in the traditional world order. Uh, so we wanted uh, to focus exclusively on the change and we wanted to educate people. So we give our research away. We have an open research ecosystem. Uh, we are very happy when people comment on our research, especially if they're working in uh, innovative areas, give us more ideas, criticize uh, or battle test our assumptions. Uh, so those are the main reasons. And with your involvement in crypto and blockchain, when did you first discover it? And I read you started investing personally back in 2015. Yes. So can you tell about your first impression about Bitcoin and about this technology? And how did, you, uh, did it come along with investing with ARK Investor? Yes, we had been curious about uh, Bitcoin from 2011. So our chief futurist, Brett Winton, um, was uh, fascinated by it. So we started talking about it regularly. So when we started uh, ARC, when we founded ARC, I wanted to dedicate some, or we wanted to dedicate resources to it. Uh, now we have three uh, crypto analysts. And in 2015, uh, we wrote a paper, uh, our analysts wrote the paper, and, and I asked my mentor, who's a good friend also now, Art Laffer, very uh, well-known economist, to uh, uh, to read it and and criticize it, and uh, when he understood what Bitcoin was, he says, "This is what I've been waiting for since we went off the gold exchange standard," and I said to him, "Then, okay, then this is a very big idea. This was in 200, and, I mean 2015 when it was 250 dollars." Uh, and uh, we took our, our first position and gained exposure to uh, uh, Bitcoin through GBTC, the Grayscale Investment Trust, in 2015 for our ETFs. Uh, so, uh, and when I asked Art, okay, big idea, how big? And he said, well, how big is the US monetary base? And at that time, it was four and a half trillion dollars and Bitcoin was only a $6 billion market cap or network value. And so I said, wow, that is a big idea. So, And we now have two sides of the development of crypto in the US. We have from one side CSC going after all the big companies, including your investment Coinbase. And on the other side, we had uh, some positive news. Uh, BlackRock uh, filed uh, its ear spot Bitcoin ETF, uh, then as well other companies followed. Uh, but you as well with ARK Invest, uh, uh, along with uh, investment company 21 Shares, yeah. filed for the Bitcoin ETF uh, back in April yeah. uh, this year, and it's your short attempt. So what are your perspectives on the outcome and what do you expect from it? Do you think this may be uh, your successful uh, attempt? Well, many people think BlackRock knows something about the SEC. Uh, we don't think that's true. Uh, we think that this is 
uh, been in process for a while. Uh, but with the grayscale trial coming to a, a conclusion pretty soon, maybe August, uh, if the SEC loses that case, uh, then the odds go up of a Bitcoin ETF. <laughs> and uh, we have our, our filing, uh, the SEC has until January, uh, mid-January sometime to approve it. BlackRock, uh, BlackRock's is through March. So they would probably uh, thinking, okay, this is a call option potentially on um, the, the SEC looking more favorably on a Bitcoin ETF, especially because they've approved not only uh, Bitcoin futures ETFs, but now it seems that they're approving a levered Bitcoin futures ETF and futures involve swaps, whereas a Bitcoin spot ETF, uh, at least the grayscale version, is uh, backed fully by Bitcoin in cold storage. So it seems to us to be much safer and contradictory uh, from uh, our point of view in terms of what the SEC is doing. And how much will it change uh, the development of crypto industry if uh, CEC approves Bitcoin ETF spot ETF finally? Yes, one of the things we've been uh, worried about is the, S <clears throat> the SEC is chasing innovation away from the US. Innovation is in the US's DNA, and that's why we're happy that the judicial branch of government and the legislative branch of government is getting involved. So <clears throat> what this probably means is we will stop chasing away innovation uh, once we get rules of the road fully in place. Uh, we'll bring back more of the innovation and um, and it'll be a global phenomenon. We're pretty excited that, uh, you know, there are many other uh, innovation hubs that want to make this happen. And we want to help them make it this happen as well, because it is a global movement. And do you think that there may be outcomes that uh, CAC will make a favor to BlackRock and will approve uh, their spot Bitcoin ETF, but uh, will reject yours? Um, we don't think so. Uh, we know that there was a surveillance clause in their prospectus uh, that ours didn't include. include. Uh, but what I'm told is it won't take much time for us to amend our prospectus and that, you know, all of the exchanges are moving in this direction. So how do you see the institutional development of uh, cryptocurrency? Yes, I, I think the institutional development was thrown off by uh, FTX last year and all of the turmoil and by the Wells notice and the suits, the, the, especially the Coinbase suit, uh, SEC. Um, uh, but I think we've seen the worst and it is interesting, uh, we're finding that institutions want to learn more and they're becoming more sophisticated. So they want to be ready for a new asset class if this truly is a new asset class from their point of view. And we think it is. And how do you uh, generally see the development of the space in the future? And as well, you mentioned during your speech about DeFi and NFTs, that it's a digi digital property rights revolution. So can you tell more about this? And as well, do you personally have any NFTs? Uh, I've given away uh, NFTs as, as uh, present, um, but in terms of the world, we see, uh, we see Bitcoin scaling uh, in the next five years, in our base case, to $600,000. And you can find in Big Ideas uh, 2023 on our site, arc-invest.com, how we get there. Uh, and we think the entire crypto asset ecosystem is going to scale from roughly a trillion dollars altogether right now uh, to 25 trillion in the next five to seven years. So big idea. And what will be the main catalyst uh, for such a big growth? The three are a global monetary system. That's Bitcoin primarily. Uh, DeFi or internet financial system. Uh, and uh, digital property rights, which many people call uh, Web3 or Metaverse. Thank you for such informative conversation. Okay. Great to have you. Great. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, and I can tell you know a lot uh, about Bitcoin and crypto. So thank you. Great interview. Thank you.